Good morning. Uh, it's 24th of February, um, and we've just got 9 a.m. here in London. I'm jumping on here to give you an update after there's been a pretty significant escalation of the Russian-Ukraine situation uh, overnight and in the early hours of the European morning. Um, I'll show you the charts, which have been pretty volatile, would be an understatement. But first, I want to say, you know, anybody that's directly impacted by this, my, you know, feelings and condolences go out to you. This is a conflict, and of course, there's in the end, never any good that comes out of this. So my, my thoughts are with you. What I wanted to do, whilst the humanitarian side of things is certainly obviously the most important, what I want to do is just kind of step away and have a look at how markets have behaved as a result of this. And I want to talk about what might happen next in terms of market reaction, obviously trying to predict what might happen next from a sort of conflict point of view is incredibly difficult. But just a quick update on some of the developments that you'll have already known about. And I'm just looking at my chart actually before I run through those because the, the chart on the far right is the ruble, which just fell off a cliff overnight as things escalated. It's actually rebounding pretty sharply here. You're not quite seeing the same rebound. Well, let's move over to the DAX, obviously more impacted than let's say US stocks. So this is the DAX where we were heavy into the close last night anyway, but obviously a sharp extension lower. Um, and we've bounced a little bit and stabilizing. I've got NAT gas down here at the bottom left, and you can see that's jumped significantly higher. Oil's up. I'll go through these figures um, in a minute. Uh, we've got Bitcoin on the bottom right. We've got gold also that's punched pretty strongly higher. But look, let's take a step back. Quick reminder of what the developments are. So um, overnight, um, according to reports, and a lot of these are Western reports, I might add, um, but bombardments of artillery, heavy equipment, small arms, and R Russian troops launched attacks from Ukraine's northern border with Belarus. Um, and as I talk about this, maybe I can just bring up, you know, it's often quite a good sort of um, reminder to kind of remember the geography of, of all of this. Um, so, yeah, apparently then Russian troops have come in from the Belarusian border, which is the one people are more concerned about in terms of this crisis escalating to a full-on war or a full-on invasion of the entire of Ukraine, because obviously that's very close proximity to Kiev. The two kind of regions that Russia earlier in the week um, recognized as independent states, where you've got this sort of uh, military sort of standoff between the Russian separatists and the Ukrainians in, in recent years, this is kind of what we, we think that Putin is after. Um, obviously, Putin annexed the Crimea back in 2014, and a lot of analysts are speculating that perhaps this is really the end game for Putin. That's kind of what we're hoping in what would be the smaller kind of situation here. Obviously, not small in any way for the people in those regions. Um, but concern that we have seen movement across the border in Belarus, and we've seen movement across the border right across that eastern side and we see movement across the border and when I say movement I'm talking about tanks and artillery and so on and so you've got this kind of three fronts that the Russian army has been kind of moving over I guess not a surprise because where these troops have been building up as has been heavily reported in recent weeks is on those three fronts and so what's happened overnight is that troops have moved across the border across all three fronts and I think ultimately that's why the Western media and particularly financial markets are alarmed this morning. Um, if I go back to the charts, I mean, other stuff that I guess has got the Western media pretty riled up and you're getting a lot of sensationalist headlines like full on um, invasion of Ukraine. I mean, what's happened? The roads coming out of Kiev uh, have been gridlocked overnight. Civilians are trying to flee the capital. Um, apparently in Kiev before dawn, um, this morning, the fi some Financial Times reporters heard explosions. Um, apparently, there's air raid sirens going off in Kiev. I think that's what's really got the, the media riled up here because they're worried this is actually a full-on attack, including a move to try and secure Kiev. Um, there's been a lot of missile strikes um, around a dozen or so airfields um, as the Russians look to try and disable um, airfields across Ukraine, and that's, and that's across the Ukraine, and that's including Kiev's um, airport, Borisplil. Um, so also facilities in the Black Sea, uh, you know, the city of Odessa, um, airports around there being targeted as well. This is what Putin said um, early this morning before the move into the country. He said, we seek to denazify Ukraine 
and defend victims of genocide despite there being no evidence of such crimes. Um, warned other countries against the temptation of meddling in the ongoing events and said Russia's response would lead to consequences that you have never encountered in your history. So obviously very aggressive, um, you know, very, when you're reading them, quite obviously very worrying, very sensationalist rhetoric. Um, I, I want to just take a step back here and maybe the ruble is going to help me in my line of argument. And, and I want to just make it clear, this is a very live situation. And obviously in a live situation of this significance, markets can turn and react incredibly powerfully. And from a risk management point of view, this is about as hard as it gets, okay? I mean, markets have panicked this morning. Probably the best example, the rubles dropped to an all-time low against the dollar, down about 10% overnight. If I go to a daily chart here, you'll see the daily candle, you know, just taking out that low we had back in January, and it's just dropped through the floor, although rebounding now, I would say. Other sensational numbers are things like the Russian stock exchange is down 45%. Um, oil's an important one that spiked up to a new, another new seven-year high. Uh, Brent crude's above 100 bucks, by the way. I think topped out at 103. I'm showing you WTI crude down the bottom left here. And actually, the commodity complex more generally is well bid in certain pockets. So oil, for sure, up 7%. Natural gas, up 5 or 6%. Um, you've got stuff like other commodities like uh, wheat, for example, where we know um, Russia's the, the largest exporter of wheat. The Ukraine's the second largest exporter of wheat in the world, that is. Wheat's up 6%. You've got stuff like palm oil and soya beans are up 5 and 7%, respectively. Um, palladium is up 5%. Aluminium is up 5%. All of these commodities where Russia is quite a key global producer are obviously showing some pretty sharp upsides here. From a safe haven point of view, well, gold is a good example, which has been pretty slow to kind of get going, I would say, this year, having lagged around um, down the 1800 handle, despite things like Omicron and things like that. But this has really woken gold up. Um, and certainly over the last couple of weeks, it's been well bid, but a powerful move here as we spike back up above $1,900. We'll go to a weekly chart to give you context. 1900 is a pretty important price point because that was the high that we saw um, in right in the middle of 2021. Okay, so an important move technically here on gold. What's happening on stuff like Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin's had a seemingly pretty positive correlation between, um, well, between it and stocks, let's say. Crypto and stocks have had a positive correlation. Certainly that's been the case as you've seen this big sell-off as the Russian-Ukraine crisis has escalated. What's interesting for me is it may be this correlation is just breaking down a little bit, even though we did get a big move lower last night. Um, I will point out the key level, mind. So before I get too carried away with my theory that the correlation might have broken down, I don't think it's broken down. I think it's weakened. The key level for Bitcoin, of course, is the low of the year that was set back on the 24th of Jan. And the move last night was a move down, uh, but not quite down to that level. But that's a key line to be looking out for. Um, so I think what's important, and I've traded through these events many times, and I guess the, the, the closest example would be the Crimea um, annexation that took place back in 2014. And what I would say there is it feels quite similar in the one hand where Russia piled into Crimea. We were worried about a full invasion of the Ukraine, but actually it was um, Putin's strategy was just to take Crimea and then kind of step back. I think what's happened here is because the Western sanctions were particularly onerous that they rolled out earlier this week, I think that's the signal for Putin to get in here. I still believe that his end game is just annexing these eastern regions. I hope that is the case. Obviously, any kind of movement of Russian troops properly rolling into Kiev means my theory is wrong. Uh, so we do need to be looking out for that. And that's the worst case scenario from a uh, global market sentiment point of view. If, you, if today we're going to see tanks in Kiev, then sure, I think these markets, whilst they look to have just kind of bounced and perhaps back to finish with that ruble. They look to have bounced a little bit here, making up maybe half of the losses. 
any kind of tanks in Kiev, and I think you've got another wave to the downside. If there are no tanks in Kiev by the end of today, then maybe things can settle. The West are going to come out fighting in terms of threatening more aggressive um, sanctions, of course, and then we'll have to see. But look, if you're trading this, be careful. Volatility is extreme. And you've got to be all over those news channels and making sure you're fully up to date second by second as this very live situation unfolds. Okay, that's a quick update from our side, guys. Good luck.